I've been patiently waiting for Denon to drop a line of receivers that won't have any chip issues with 4K 120Hz functionality, but will also have more than a single 8K input since I have both a PS5 and Series X. Well, hallelujah, that day has finally come, and I've got what appears to be the best of their budget line, the S970H, in my possession. It's got 8K video, 3D audio, all the connectivity and formats I could possibly want, but there's one big reason why it's going back. Let's talk about it. The Denon S970H is a 90 watt per channel, 7.2 channel AV receiver, is the top of the line model in their S series, and currently retails for $899. It supports every audio format you could possibly want, including 3D audio, Dolby True HD, Dolby Atmos, Dolby Atmos Height Virtualization, Dolby Atmos Music, Dolby Surround, DTS HD Master, DTS X, DTS Neuro X and DTS Virtual X. Try saying that all in one breath. It does use the base version of Odyssey Multi EQ instead of XT or XT32 to calibrate, but I've been using it for years with the S960H I've had and find it to be just fine. Of course, I have been using it with a full set of Polk Signature Series speakers with S55 towers, so if you've got the speaker hardware to match, Multi EQ should yield solid results. It also has dynamic EQ and dynamic volume, which in my opinion, improves the overall sound quality when switching sources or listening at lower volumes, very helpful for those of us in apartment situations. You can also use the Multi-EQ Editor app to fine-tune customization to tailor the sound even more. Now, if for whatever reason you've calibrated and you find that you can't understand what people are saying in shows or movies, it comes equipped with Dialogue Enhancer, which bumps up those frequencies and should make dialogue more audible. Now, if that doesn't work, you can also try boosting the decibels of the center speaker up a bit, but that brings me to something I feel is super important to talk about and something I've learned firsthand. Now, initially, I had my TV on the TV stand because I didn't want to drill holes in the wall, which meant my center speaker had to sit in the top center shelf. Now, I knew from research that ideally, you want the center speaker to sit as close to ear level as possible, but Red, you could tilt the speaker up to face your ears and that would help. Well, after doing so for a few weeks, it became obvious that something needed to change as dialogue was either too low or just sounded boomy even after using dialogue enhancer and boosting the center speaker volume. So I mounted the TV after all, placed the speaker up top, slightly tilted it towards my ear level, and voila. Speech in shows and movies sounds much better than before, so if you can do it, I highly recommend you do the same. If you stream music like I do, it is Bluetooth and Wi-Fi compatible and supports AirPlay 2, Spotify, Pandora, Tidal, Sirius XM, and more, and can be streamed wirelessly to compatible HEOS components like Denon home speakers and control them with the HEOS app. There's also a front USB port that supports up to 24-bit 192kHz high-res audio and supports formats like MP3, WMA, WAV, MPEG-4, and FLAC. And it supports Zone 2 audio playback, so you can listen to a second source in a separate room, but that's not something I would use in a small apartment. Now, all of those features are fantastic, but let's be honest, the real reason most of us are upgrading is because we need proper HDMI 2.1 support for our next-gen consoles. The problem with the old S960H is that in addition to the chip problems, it only has one HDMI 2.1 input, so thankfully the S970H now features three HDMI 2.1 inputs, so even though the PS5 and Series X are the only devices on the market that would need it, you might have some future proofing just in case Nintendo were to join the party, or we finally get the long-awaited GameCast. With those ports, we get full 8K 60Hz or 4K 120Hz capabilities with HDR, HLG, HDR10+, Dynamic HDR, 3D Pass-Through, ARC and eARC, even Dolby Vision. 
And now that the industry is finally catching up, variable refresh rate and auto low latency mode. Now, I personally tested games that can achieve 4K 120Hz and can confirm it works. In total, you have six HDMI inputs, with three being 2.1 and two AK outputs. And while I personally don't see a need for two outputs, I figured you can use the second output for something like the Philips Hue TV light strip to plug into the HDMI sync box. You can connect two subwoofers, your standard center, left and right, left and right rear, and an additional left and right surround back speakers, which can be configured to a 7.2 speaker setup or up to 5.2.2 Atmos. Does this receiver solve my needs as someone who wants a Dolby Atmos home theater with HDMI 2.1 support for my consoles? It absolutely does, and if you have a thousand dollar budget, this is definitely one you should consider. But there's a big reason I'm sending it back, and that is because before the S9070H, the S760H was released. Every single feature we talked about minus the two HDMI outputs as it only has one and the fact that it's 75 watts per channel instead of 90 can be found on the S760H. The best part? The S970H retails for $899 at the time of this video, while the S760H can be found for as low as $499 at Costco. If you don't need two HDMI outputs and are fine with 75 watts per channel instead of 90, which honestly you're not even going to notice a difference of 15 watts, you can save yourself $400 and go with the S760H. I've actually been using it now for about a year with no hiccups and during this time was waiting for the S970H to be released to replace it, but now that I've compared them spec for spec, gaining 15 watts per channel for an extra $400, well, you tell me, is it worth it? The only drawback here is according to Crutchfield, Denon has now discontinued it, but it is still in stock at Costco at the time of this video, and there's a few on Amazon you can grab and save yourself $400. If you've made it this far into the video, you must be enjoying this content, so consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell to help my small channel grow. If you end up watching this video and the S760H is long gone, nowhere to be found new, the S970H is still a fantastic option if you've got the budget and all you need at the most is a 5.1.2 or even a 5.2.2 Dolby Atmos setup. The bottom line is that now that technology has caught up to get the most out of our consoles, we can finally have the best of both worlds and have both an immersive home theater system and a killer gaming setup all in one. And while it's a subjective thing, I prefer the din and sound for years over a few Ankyo and Yamaha receivers I've tried and can fully recommend the S970H as a solid option. Now, let me know what you think of this receiver, if you're going to get one, or if you absolutely hated this video, let me know in the comments below. I always appreciate viewer feedback. Now, that's going to wrap things up for today. So, until next time, thank you for watching, stay tuned, and have a great rest of your day.